Hello everyone, this is Muhammad Khatarwar and I completed my A level study in 22 from Mastermind. I'm currently a sophomore at Dhaka University IBA and I'm also working as a teacher for Vertical Horizon where I teach IBA and UP aspects in the university admission journey. And today I'm here to answer some frequently asked questions relating great boundaries and grading system of Edison and Cambridge. What are raw marks and bonus marks? Alright, raw marks are basically the marks that you yourself obtain in your particular unit or particular exam that you're sitting for. UMS, on the other hand, is a conversion. It stands for a uniform marking scale where your raw marks is converted into a particular consistent grade in that particular subject. And the purpose for doing so, the purpose for the exam course for introducing this UMS is basically so that um, examiners from different exam sessions have um, a consistent marking scale so that they can be compared to other students from other exam sessions. So what grading system does Ericsson use for the international levels? Alright, so the grading system that RGCC O level used to use was a metric from A star to U. Now currently, the new grading system has something different. It's a grading system from 9 to 1, where 9 is the highest rate and 1 is the lowest rate. How does it differ? from the previous grading system. It's more or less similar, the only difference is that the grade 9 is a further distinction for top achievers, where um, even though it's, it's declared that 8 and 9 are both equivalent to A star of the previous grade, but the grade 9 is a little distinction for higher achievers. So what grading system does Ericsson use for IA? So for ASL's IL A-levels, um, the subjects are more modular and the units that you have to sit for are divided into AS units and AD units. And you have to sit for the AS units first before sitting for the AD units. And the grading system is done from A star to E. And how do you get the marks in here? So the, your results or your grade is calculated on the accumulated summation of AS unit marks and AD unit marks, you get the result of your caching at the end of A2. So how to get an A star in LXL A levels? Alright, so in order to get A star in LXL A levels, two distinct criteria and conditions have to be met. First of all, in your final A level marks, you need to have a total or a minimum of 80% marks. Not only that, you also need to get 90% marks in your A2 unit separately. This is done so as to give further importance on A2 units because A star is something that they claim to be prestigious and gracious. So this is why they add this extra level of hurdles. So for example, if you're sitting for a 6 unit subject like physics, chemistry or biology, where the total marks is out of 600, you need to ensure that you get a minimum of 480 marks. While also ensuring that in the A2 units where the total marks is 300, you get a total minimum of 270 marks. For four year subjects like business studies, where the total marks is 400, you need to ensure that you get a minimum of 320 marks, while also ensuring that in the A2 units out of 200, you get a minimum of 180 marks. For subjects like mathematics, where um, there are four units for S and two units for A2, two units which are P3 and P4. You need to ensure that you get a minimum of 480 marks, but also ensuring that in the two A units, you get a minimum of 180 marks in order to get an So what grading system does Cambridge use? Alright, so Cambridge uses a grading system, a consistent grading system, with the help of PUM, or Percentage Uniform Mark. What is, what exactly is this? This is what you exactly see on students' uh, grading sheets or marks where they're marked from 100 to 0. So 100 being the topmost mark. Now, how does Cambridge calculate this P1 marks? This is a little confusing, but I'll try my best to make it easy for you. Alright, so let's take this example of a level physics of Cambridge. So as you can see on the screen, that subject has a total of five different components. Each component with their own distinct maximum raw marks. Now, you give your exam and so you get these marks. Are these your final marks? Not really. So Cambridge has this particular system of ACWF, which is basically 
each component having their own scale factor by which the raw marks get multiplied by. Cambridge does this so as to give varying levels of importance to different different components. Now, for this particular example, um, for physics, we have most of the um, scale factors as one, except for unit four, which is your first seven factor. So even if you get a total of sixty-four out of hundred, after you multiply the SCWF, your final available marks is forty-eight. Now, once all your raw marks have been multiplied with their uh, with the specific SCWF, now this these final marks get added up. Once added up, these particular marks will be compared with the grade threshold of that particular exam session, which is synonymous or analogous to the grade boundaries of ASL. As you can see in this particular year, the grade boundary has shown that um, a student obtaining 176 with an A, a student obtaining minimum of 201 with an A, and so on. For our case, the student has obtained a total of 183. So as you can see, this particular student, student has obtained marks which is within the range of A and A star. So the marks is beyond A but below A star. So the final marks that the student will get in this grade sheet after being converted to PUM will be something around 83 or 84 because as Cambridge does not show this total mark but rather convert the grading into 100 and this is how your marks delivered by being internally, internally converted from all these into your final PUM. Okay, so how do you get an A star in Cambridge? Honestly, there are no secrets. Just say. No, God! Thank you. Bye.